You're listening to Science for Soundness, the podcast. This is not your usual podcast. This is a journey. And as with any journey, I don't know yet where this one is going. If anything, I'm hoping to inspire you to take the first step, even if it's into the unknown, even if you don't know where you're going and you do it scared. Hi, I'm Steffi. I'm an equine scientist and equine therapist. I've made it my mission to support horse owners on the individual journey of horse-human connection and personal growth. I want you to know that I'm with you on this one. Think of me as a friendly voice, a reminder to stay the course, to keep going, keep listening to yourself and to your horse, even when the going gets tough. Let's do this. Hey friend! I'm so glad you're here. Today is going to be a somewhat different episode because this is going to be just me chatting to you, (laughs) answering some questions. I'm not sure if you remember, but a little while ago, I asked a question on Facebook and Instagram, which was what you would like to know what kind of questions are on your mind and I told you I was going to create something with it and honestly I was really surprised by the messages that I've received in that little question sticker because there was this common thread that kind of weaved them all together and that's what we're here to talk about today because I think it's great. I think it's great that you dare asking these questions I I think it's absolutely great that people are, in general, asking more questions instead of just taking things for granted and adapting to other people's opinions and visions. And I absolutely love the fact that I am the one who is allowed to answer those for you. So here we go. I'm going to just introduce you to some of these questions and then I'm going to just let you know what I think I would say to this. Let's start with something that I think is really, really important. And that is the question of how to keep on going your own way with your horse. And the person said, yes, it's again a mindset question. Why I want to introduce this question as the first one is the fact that this is the common thread that went through all of these ones. All of the questions were kind of woven together by the fact that we are wondering why, what, how, what if, and are trying to answer these. And the traditional horse world, let's call it that, is not necessarily equipped to answer these questions. I have had so many moments, so many times when I honestly felt like horses are probably not what I'm here to do and I felt like giving up and that was due to the fact that everything I was taught, everything that I knew that was kind of handed down to me by all these what I thought incredible horse people, it turned out that it didn't work for my pony B back in the day and I stumbled and I crashed and I just hit so many roadblocks with her that I was honestly thinking about, okay, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe horses are not my thing and maybe I should just leave it all together because there is no joy in it if you just keep on forcing your way through it. But I think throughout all that hardship, all the emotions that overwhelmed me and, you know, nobody ever taught me how to handle those and deal with that. So that's another story for another day. But all this overwhelm, and and feeling lost and confused and and just sort of generally generally not sure of where it's going i think this is a blessing i think this can be such a good point to stop and take a deep breath in and then reassess reassess like where you're at where you want to go what it is that you're doing, what's working, what is not working, and just take this like meta view on your entire horse-human relationship and assess that connection, see what's there and see what isn't there. And then once you figure that out, you can decide and you have to decide where you want to go. So do you want to stop? Do you want to not 
continue this way? Do you not want to continue at all? Or do you decide that you choose the way you continue? And listen to yourself and listen to your horse in that process. And I know that sounds kind of woo-woo, but it really isn't. It really isn't woo-woo at all. If you look at your horse and you assess them and you see how they're feeling, how they're doing, how they're able to connect with you and interact with you from a space of safety and and just generally feeling good about themselves or whether they are in constant fear of what's to come. And it is our job or your job as an owner to work with that. And then if you feel like, okay, there is something missing, then that's great. Go there, go do that. And I'm not sure if this answered your question. I'm not calling out any names here, but keep on going your way if you feel like it's the right way. If you feel like you're going in the wrong direction, stop again and then reassess again. Nobody ever said that this has to be a linear path. And I know we get this idea of people working the horses from the beginning and then building them up the levels and then competing or doing whatever and having these amazing performing little or huge personalities um that's not always the case and I think we need to say goodbye to that idea of this is how it works because truth be told it's a much more messy path it's a much more messy thing to work together with an individual speaking two entirely different languages and it's our job to try and come together at a space of understanding and mutual connection and appreciation for each other and if we don't have that then we don't have a connection at all so just keep on going one step at a time reassess and then start again and allow yourself to do that don't take anyone else's word over what it is that you're experiencing and what what it is that your horse is experiencing in that moment I hope that makes sense (laughs) But um, yeah, that was question number one. And there is another great question, which kind of goes along the same lines in a different direction. But it is, like I said, there is this common thread going through all of them. And this is you asking amazing questions. And this question is, how can equestrians still compete whilst also meeting the needs of their horses and helping them love their job. That's great. That's huge, right? It is a matter of reassessing. Like I just said with the previous question, it's a matter of reassessing, stopping, like really, really stopping and taking this really pure, honest, vulnerable look at things and be okay with what you see. So if you see that your horse is uncomfortable or is not loving their job, then okay, what can we do to help them enjoy it more? Can we use more positive reinforcement? Can we maybe have them work less? Can we vary their training or their work a bit more? Can we hack them out more and do more stuff out on the trails rather than just going round and round in arena? What did what is there and what isn't there and what can we do? in order to improve the situation. And by the end of it, I think every great equestrian, well, at least every great equestrian that I know, has the ability to completely set aside their ego and look at their horse and then say, okay, I see this isn't for you. It's my thing, but I see it's not for you. So we're not gonna do this anymore. And how many people do you know who actually then push on and force their horses through situations, competitions? It could be anything, really. It could be a puddle on the floor and the horse is clearly communicating that they're scared and they they need more help in this or they don't want to do it. But then you see people pushing their way through the puddle and making the horse do something that they're not comfortable doing. And I think every great equestrian in this world should have the inherent ability to just say, okay, let's not do it then. Because it's not about me. It's about us. It's about you. It's about the way you feel when you're working with me. So yeah, I think 
that is something that I would love to stress and I would love to take or carry out more into this world, into this equestrian world. And if we find that sort of middle ground, as messy as it may be, but if we find that middle ground, then I think equestrians can still compete and meet the needs of their horses, but they have to put the horse's needs before their own. And that is huge. So yeah, that is huge. And it, it requires a lot of courage on behalf of the owner as well, or the, the rider, because if we can't let go of ego in that moment, then we're doomed. <laughs> okay, so I have this other question, and that is, a German question so I'm going to translate it for you guys but it kind of goes along the lines of there are so many terms and there is so much terminology in the equestrian world that this person thinks on and feels that everybody is understanding something else and they don't know what exactly it should look like or what it what exactly it is and we're talking about terms like horses going over their backs Uh, horses that should be ridden forward, horses that are walking on the forehand and just in general, just terms like that, that we hear a lot in the, in the equine world. So this person says they think everybody is kind of understanding something else and they feel like they surely can't be the only ones thinking that. And Again, great question, because how are we supposed to know what it looks like if everybody understands something else and if everybody showcases something else? And because this is a podcast, I can't really give you an image of something. But what I can try and do is offer you a sense of what it could feel like. So when I speak to my clients, my um, one-on-one -on -one clients that I work with um, either on site or even online there is always this thing like oh but shouldn't it look like this or shouldn't it feel like this or shouldn't it be like that and well yes <laughs> we can do that we can have this image in mind but what we also need to do and that I think is way more important is look at the individual horse because This is what makes it so complicated to try and get this ideal image of something like walking on the forehand shouldn't be done. They should I, they should walk over their back. Like what what the hell does that even mean? That does not make sense at all anatomically. But anyway, <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. We we haven't got a clear image of that because every horse is unique. And yes, whilst they all have the same kind of build up. They all have different body shapes and forms and they have differences in personality and in the ability to move with their body. So it is our job as owners or riders to look and assess and see what's possible. But then also when we know what's possible, it should feel possible. And what I mean by that is... If you're riding your horse and everything feels like a drag, like you have to force every step and, and that could be either by trying to like make them more forward by, by kicking them on. I'm not encouraging this by the way, but by trying to kick them on, this is, this is not something that feels particularly light. That is something that feels forced and by it feeling forced, It is not something that your horse is able or just capable of doing right now at this point in time. And that could, again, have so many different reasons that we can't possibly get into in this one podcast session. But what I'm trying to get to is the fact that we have to appreciate the uniqueness of every horse and every rider as well. So whilst one horse may be able to perform a specific movement with rider A, rider B might not be able to get that same movement out of the same horse because they sit differently, they have a different ability to tune into their own body and therefore they can't quite connect with the horse in that way. So where I'm getting to is instead of having this image in your mind 
try and have a feeling, a feeling of lightness, a feeling of ease and flow. You know, the moments when you don't actually think about what you're doing, but you're doing it, but it feels so good. And, and right at that particular time that you don't even think about the way you hold your hands or where your legs placed or the way you're, you're engaging your core or you're not. And you're just doing it without overthinking it. And I think these are the kind of moments when we all of a sudden have this big smile on our face when we know, okay, we're doing something right here. And then <laughs> only from that moment, I think we can then go a bit more meta and look at it and say, okay, and analyze. Maybe if you video yourself, then analyze, okay, what was I doing in that particular moment? Because it felt amazing and I need to know what it was. And I need to see what my horse was actually doing because it felt great, but I have no idea. And kind of allow ourselves to assess those moments and experience and explore those moments because having this image in mind of what it should be is not going to get us anywhere. I mean, yes, of course, you have a direction and you're kind of trying to get there, but at the same time, it's also hindering you from exploring your own abilities and your horse's abilities. By always having this ideal picture in mind, you will always limit yourself to that box. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be able to have this childlike innocence when you interact with your horse, where you come from a space of, this is fun for both of us and it's not forced at all and it feels right and it looks good and my horse is actually doing it and then yes of course there is a lot of technique and and there is a lot of um, understanding of physiology and anatomy that comes with it but we should never let go or lose sight of that feeling and if we have that then I think yeah we can go from there <laughs> I'm not sure if that answered your question because this is the way that I approach these, these terms. This is the way I define them. I don't look at a specific movement. I have a feeling and I actually connect with that feeling in that moment. And sometimes I'm lucky enough for somebody to stand there and then I can say, what exactly are they doing right now? What's their face, facial expression like? Because when I'm on top, I, I can't really see. So what's the facial expression like? Because it feels light, but what does it look like? And then I get feedback like that. And I'm also lucky enough to have people in my life that I can trust to give me that kind of feedback and not to stand there and shout at me and tell me what to do, because that's not the environment that either my horse or I learn in. So we need people around us that actually support us, allow us to make those little mistakes, whenever they may be, we actually need those people in our lives who enable us to be ourselves, have that childlike approach to some things. And yes, of course, also tell us whatever you're doing right now, your horse is not enjoying that. Their facial expression says no, they're grinding their teeth. I mean, you should be able to sense that whilst you're riding anyway, but sometimes we're not and it helps to have that view from somebody else or have yourself videoed and then reassess yourself. It is, it is literally so individual. So walking over the back or arching their back or walking, moving forwards, being on the forehand, all of that stuff should be secondary to the experience. That was my dog sneezing. It should be secondary to the experience that you're having with your horse. And by that, I really truly mean with the horse and not on top of the horse or whilst manipulating the horse or micromanaging their movements. It's not about that. It's about what you're doing together as a team and whether you're both enjoying that or not. And then if you still want feedback, then obviously you can get back to me with some video. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the, way, that's the way I would define things. That's the way I see things and that's the way I feel them as well. And so far, I mean, the one thing I truly know to be true is that none of my horses are forced in any way and if they have moments where it feels like oh this is a bit sticky then I just get off because as I said before there is no space for ego if I push through because I feel like it has to be done then maybe it's not right maybe it's not the right thing to do and I would honestly say that all of my horses are happy to come and work with me in whatever way if it be on the ground or from the saddle or going on a hack, it, it doesn't even matter. 
they are all happy to interact with me and that that is the feedback that I need that is the feedback that I need to improve myself but also to to fine-tune and to work on on those things rather than getting hung up on these topics or terms of what it means to walk on the forehand and probably by saying all of that and by <laughs> answering in this kind of fashion I've given you a different view on this one that might add to a list of views that that you've already experienced and seen and heard but maybe it's one that you haven't had before and maybe it helps you in seeing from a different perspective as well and if not that's also okay that's your choice I think or I hope that with this get the idea that a lot of a lot of everything that I do with horses a lot of what we do with horses is also about ourselves and the way we look at things and there is a saying I've mentioned it before multiple times <laughs> you're probably sick of it already maybe not I hope you're not but there is a saying and it says or it's a quote rather and it says when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change so rather than being boxed in to the view that you should have or you think you should have try and allow yourselves to look at the things in a different way try and allow yourselves to be more open-minded or a bit more meta or just look at what's behind the thing that you're looking at and and start asking more of these amazing questions because they are going to get you to a greater place with your horse with yourself they're going to help your personal growth but also your connection with your horse they're going to help you grow on so many levels but we have to be willing to ask these questions beforehand and by that I do not mean questions like how can I improve my horse's canter because that's secondary that is something that will naturally improve if you improve on the things that are the foundation <laughs> and by that foundation it all starts with you it starts with you it starts with the way you look at the things it starts with the approach that you take with your horse it starts with the way you keep your horse you feed them you have them interact with other horses and the way you interact with and ride them eventually it all kind of builds on top of each other and I think the more we can zoom out and have that view on every single aspect holistically looking at everything we can then improve on so many levels and that canter will improve as a natural consequence to that so I hope this was insightful this was certainly cool for me to do if you feel like it let me know and then we can do more of these <laughs> I hope that you can take away from this that you should always feel encouraged to ask more of these amazing questions. Question yourself, question what you're doing, not in a negative way, but just from a neutral point and, and see what it is you're doing, how you're doing it. You know, something like taking the bridle off your horse. Are you doing that with compassion and kindness? And are you giving your horse the chance to let go of that bit softly or are you smashing their teeth in because you're just ripping it off you know it's the small subtle little things that we can do every single day that will improve our interaction with our horses and ultimately improve that connection but we have to be willing to ask those questions first so hopefully you feel encouraged now and if you do then please let me know send me a dm on instagram or Write your question in one of those question stickers that I post frequently and we can take it from there because more people need to hear this. More people will have the same questions that you have and I hope this just feels really encouraging to you to know that you're not alone. We all have these questions and we all want those answers. It's just a question of how we get there and how we find out for ourselves. I can't do that for you but maybe... Maybe my perspective was kind of helpful for you in that moment. Hi friend, I hope you found something in this episode that resonated with you. I am beyond grateful that you hung out with me today for a little while and I do hope that you come along for the ride. 
make sure you subscribe to the podcast and if you feel like it, leave a review. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. If you have any questions or would like me to talk about a certain topic, check the show notes for ways to get in touch. I can't wait for next time. You got this.